Hello, View Candy here, and welcome back to Funilla County. And last time out, we built ourselves this makeshift vanilla rail yard over here and our huge factory district. We are seriously raking in the money with all of this industrial infrastructure in the city now. And also the traffic is flowing really quite beautifully, actually. It's really calmed down now and it's busy roads. It's definitely busy roads. We get tiny bits of backup around here, but everything really is just moving quite nicely indeed. And I have still not managed to spawn in this asset. <laughs> I may resort to getting find it so I can plop it because I cannot understand why it won't come in. It's It just makes no sense <laughs> to me whatsoever. And that just shows the kind of pain of the vanilla game, honestly, waiting for these assets to grow in. But I'm really trying to resist just getting find it to plop it in because I don't want to cheat. I don't want to cheat. So we'll wait and see. But hopefully today we'll get a bit more industrial demand and we'll be able to put that in. Because the plan for today is actually to get the tile over here, get that unlocked and build ourselves a waterfront campus on the top of this very, very steep cliff over here in this section. So a kind of out of town campus. We'll have another campus that's sort of integrated quite close into the downtown, I think. But this is going to be our starting campus and our first one for the city. But in order to get there, we do need a population of 16,000 in order to unlock that tile. We're around about 800, 850 ish off that mark. So I'm going to start today's episode by doing a time lapse, extending out this residential district out into this side over here. Just using the same techniques and the same patterns that we've done previously, which is why I'm going to time lapse it very quickly so that we can focus on our campus build today.
so there we go and this actually turned out into a bigger job than i thought i can't not put in little extra bits of detail so i really like how the brooklyn's and queens actually has sat in and we're kind of mixing it back into some low density over this side a little bit of vanilla high density as well just to vary it up in that kind of transition between the two We've got a couple of little parks here too and lots of walking paths flowing throughout so we've got lots of decent connections for people particularly around this baseball field i absolutely love these sports field assets here yeah with the brooklyn's and queens like they're really 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 nice assets from street level and i think they kind of look okay with the wider road and the low density on one side i did wonder if it would be a little bit jarring but it's a slow kind of crawl up towards our downtown so we need this sort of medium density solution as it burns down there and I've just noticed this patch here, which definitely needs a touch of detailing still. But yeah, lots and lots of people walking backwards and forwards and really like actually this raised metro coming up alongside this road with the path next to it and the little trees. Adds a really nice touch of greenery and then the layers of height, obviously, with this raised metro flowing through the area. Um, and then this big patch of green here. Now, I started off putting low density in there and it just looked rubbish. <laughs> so I changed it up at the end make it a big block of the brooklyn's and queens with this nice green forested open space in the middle there a nice little like corner plaza here i couldn't work out the paths quite exactly and it looks like there's a little bit of tearing there because i did use vanilla paths and upgraded them so that needs a bit of sorting out but in general the kind of idea of it is there <laughs> So once we unlock this tile over here, we'll be able to obviously expand out these road boundaries and it will hopefully make a bit more sense. But I think for now, that's looking pretty good. And of course, we have hit that 16,000 population milestone. In fact, we're way over it. So that does mean now we're well on the way to 20 actually already. We've got the extra tile. We also have unlocked the Liberal Arts College campus area, which is great news because I'm thinking we're going to use that for our campus today over in this area over here. So let's firstly go ahead and unlock this tile. And this does mean now that we're going to have to get to a population of 32,000 to get one more tile. So within this, we're going to have to put quite a lot of residential, <laughs> which is fine. We're going to do a big kind of open canal area, waterfront down the front here. Lots more residential behind Tyler Town Centre to be added as well. And of course, we'll probably put a little bit of residential, I think, within the campus as kind of student housing too. So we should easily be able to get to 32,000 with this. So like we're well on the way to 20, even just with this small expansion. And of course, we've still got quite a lot of space over this side. The airport's going in here, which is why I'm reluctant to start building up too much in that area just as of yet. But this should get us nicely to that milestone at least. So <laughs> this is an interesting area. It actually slopes up towards the water's edge and it's very, very bumpy indeed. I did sneak in a little water pump. You may not have seen that. I think I did that off camera. <laughs> We're going to move those around eventually. Um, but I did actually have a quick check of water resources and we are right on the line. So I am actually for now just going to plop in another one of these right here. And we're also going to head back over to the fewage water solutions over here and turn on another one of our inland water treatment plants because that should hopefully once that kicks in give us a bit more leeway on the water and we've still got three pumps there that we can turn back on so yeah we should be fine from a sewage point of view and of course we'll keep adding water as and when we need it i've just noticed as well this is now full so let's go ahead and use natural disasters we're going to collapse the asset like this and then we'll just nicely bulldoze it and plop a new one in like that much much quicker than trying to <laughs> empty it and of course as well reaching 16,000 we have now do have crematoriums so I would like to add a couple of these in I kind of don't really think it's appropriate around this space here with our cemeteries although obviously it would be nice to have it close to that I'm actually thinking over here where we don't have many graveyards down this end. There's not really great death service at all around here. I'm thinking we could squeeze one in next to the post office right here would be a nice little area for that. Then potentially another one actually down here by the bridge is what I was thinking, kind of underneath the bridge. Maybe something like that. It's a little bit out of place but it will serve this neighbourhood quite nicely. And I don't think crematoriums would necessarily be right in the centre of a town. I'm just flying over here to check this asset one more time. It's still not coming in. <laughs> It'll be forever <laughs> until we get that. 
Okay, let's talk about the campus. So firstly, we're going to obviously clear out our trees. We want a nice clean palette and a clean space to work with. And we don't want these sitting underneath our roads as we put them in. So I'm just going to clear them out right back up to here. We're not going to go this big today. We probably won't reach level five today. It does take a while for campuses to upgrade, but we're going to get as far as we can. And we'll, we'll kind of be part one, I think, of the campus. And then we'll add in varsity sports later on. Be really curious to hear what varsity sports options you think would be good for this i'm kind of thinking we might put a stadium somewhere down here with a ferry stop on the waterfront by it i kind of feel like that might be quite nice and do a bit of vanilla key detailing around it manipulating the water to our liking as a kind of transition level between the main campus up here and the canal district that will sit down here but let me know what sports you would like to see in that area so next up, I am going to smooth out this landscape. Like I said, it kind of goes up towards the water's edge, which is not handy at all <laughs> for us. So we're going to grab the level of our ring road just out here, and we're going to start to smooth it off towards the edge. We're not going to go too far, but I do want a nice flat layer without the bumps up towards the edge. I want to be able to have nice views from our campus area, ultimately, out towards the water so i think this is the best way to do it we're going to ignore this for a second because we'll remove this road and reshape it in just a moment but let's bring this right up to our nice rocks there and as close as we can get it to the edge without kind of interfering too much with the banking there and we're actually going to draw it all the way over this side too before we start to drop down a layer just so it's nice and flat for us to work with so let's trim this back just a little bit and then we'll bring it on a little bit straighter actually how we had it originally <laughs> in fact but we just don't know until we get these builds in exactly how we want it and then from here we're going to start to curve it around so i'm just going to go to freeform for this so we get a nice interesting angle and we'll go to about there and have it heading off in this direction that still looks like it's pushing up the landscape a little bit so let's just try that again check our levels here yeah because we actually haven't pushed this up far enough against that rail line over this side so let's go ahead and do that so yeah that is a lot better and then from this point i'm actually going to recess it a little bit so we're going to grab our smallest brush size and also lower the brush strength a little bit we'll just right click until we can bring this down just a little touch i don't want it too far and then we'll get level terrain and we'll start to bring out a very small kind of indent for it. And the reason really for that is then that we can have roads flowing slightly easier over this highway here. And also it will help for getting it sort of rounded. I'm not sure if it will necessarily go down the hill, but it is going to head off more in this direction, at least where the land is lower. So it kind of makes sense to do that, I think. So from this point, we'll then use the slope tool. We'll right click at the top of the slope and we'll just bring out a nice gentle slope as that road is going to head down here and it may need adjusting obviously as we put in the road but let's go ahead and see if we can get this in that's a bit better i have yeah just recessed it a little bit further and smoothed out the connections as we come back up over the top and, and round the side here which will eventually be our canal district so the ring road, I'm hoping, will go around the airport out this way and all, literally all the way around the city. I'm thinking somewhere along the waterfront it might convert into a slightly more local road rather than the highway. But that is the general idea of it. And we do get a lot of usage out of it, even just with this small section of the city in at the moment. So that's good to see. Right, campus time. <laughs> so let's grab our campus area to start off with. And we're literally just going to draw it in across this whole space here. Like, it's probably not going to be this big. I mean, it might be because some of the campus assets are particularly large. But we're going to fill it all out for now so that we have the opportunity to do what we want within the space without having to remember to extend the campus area. So for the entrance, I am going to use a road like just before the road starts to dip down here. I'm going to use the two lane road with tree median because I feel like that is a nice entrance way into our campus. And I want it coming off at an angle that's kind of parallel ish to the coast, but also 90 degrees off this road. So this probably feels like a pretty good space here to start bringing it out. So we're going to bring out a long road up to, let's say, about there for now. And then we'll just grab a regular road for the moment. Of course, we can upgrade these afterwards and we'll just bring out a section like this. The first thing we want to do is to place our main building. So, yeah, like I said, we're going to go for liberal arts here. 
I feel like it's a nice aesthetic for an out of town university and I'm kind of saving the trade school I think for in the middle of the downtown. Like some of these buildings you could make some seriously nice downtown sort of plaza areas in front of this. This could go nicely by a transport hub even and we'll probably integrate it right into the main downtown. I'm not going to worry about power just for the moment but let's have a little think about some of the other buildings that we're going to be putting in to start off with because the main focus really of starting a campus is to get all of these things done. So immediately I'm going to go to the Academic Works uh, tab here. We have got so much money. So I'm actually just going to whack this up to the maximum for the moment, which gives us a 79% chance of an Academic Works creation. It's expensive, but we've got the budget to do it. So I'll keep an eye on this. If we start dropping too much, then I'll obviously stop it. But that's fine for me for now. And then we'll go ahead and also give a 50,000 one-off grant as well. So cinematography, let's say, and then hopefully we might just about get these two academic works by the end of the academic year. Now, the other thing, obviously, is students. Now, the way that we can attract those is I do have this faculty building here with 500 university students in it. I'm going to turn that off for the moment. We'll turn it back on later. But for now, I want everyone to be coming into this campus. And then the other thing we can do is also look at policies. So we've obviously got Tyler here. We have a look at the policies for Tyler. What we can do is add education boost to it. So I think we will do that. It's close to the university site. So I'm happy for all of these people to focus on university education ultimately. And I think we'll also do this for Walnut Hills out here, which needs a name, by the way. So if you've got a suggestion for the start of our little Brooklyn's and Queens district here, which will be extended out more towards the downtown, please do let me know your suggestions for that. But let's also go to Walnut Hills. We've got our policies here and let's add education boost to that as well, because that'll be a nice proportion of people. If we have a look. There's actually already 3000 people in that district. In Tyler, we've actually got almost 10,000. That's a decent slug of our population that are going to be wanting to get education at a university level. And we'll leave Puddington. We'll also leave our village on the outskirts over here as not without education boost ultimately so that they can focus on getting the jobs in the industry because we don't want to find ourselves too over-educated. Ultimately, we want to keep a nice balance, particularly with the amount of industry that we have in this city at the moment. Uh, let's bring in a very temporary power connection <laughs> to the back of this building for now so that we can get it up and running. Then we'll have a little look at our next building. So we have also got the study hall and I'm kind of thinking we'd probably put this in next to this building here. So maybe at this kind of distance away could be quite nice. And I'm thinking at a side angle. So yeah, so it's side onto the road like this. Because I would like to leave a lot of breathing room between the buildings. We've got a large space to put our campus in here. So I want you know, lots of green space and open space in and around it. So that's an inviting place for students to come and visit ultimately. And then next to this, we can actually add in a large car park is what I'm thinking. So let's extend this road out this way. And we'll go ahead and use our ploppable car parks for this. We'll create a nice grid so that we can have two of these back to back like this and potentially even another one up this side wouldn't go amiss here let's just redraw in that road so that it sits nicely at the back of those car parks there and then we could also just trim down this one but again it's nicely aligned with our car parks and we've got quite a large car parking area in that space and we can use paths to connect this up so let's go ahead and connect into the back of this one and we're going to just draw this all the way around this car park here and down this way as well just so it's connected onto that road and that kind of gives us a nice little frame for the car park we could even upgrade it to the one with trees around here might be quite nice against the car park we have already got our little sugar maples in which i think are quite appropriate for this so yeah yeah i'm enjoying that i think as well we will i kind of don't really want people parking in and around the car park so let's definitely upgrade those to ones without parking on it and similarly, I think we might use a, a tree median road around these particular roads around the front of the campus here too. And I think the tree we'll put on them will be the sugar maple. I just really like it. It's kind of small enough that it's not dominant, but green. So it sort of fits the Funella County vibe, I think. Well, that's the sort of start of our formation over there. And then as well, within the campus... Let's not also forget, we do now also have the School of Education unlocked. And I'd really like this one kind of up against the cliff. 
I think that would be a nice place for it to be. So let's go and grab our roads here. Bring this one out a little bit further and perhaps we bring this out at this level. We need to see how big the asset is. Yeah, we could actually go back even further here. So let's go back to here and see if we can slot that in up against the water's edge. So something like that is what I'm thinking because then you can see it at the top of the cliff. It's all in shadow for <laughs> this particular sun angle. But I really like that aesthetic, looking down over the water and the fishing boats. And of course, we'll do some nice natural waterfront detailing here as well. Let's just get rid of this one for now. And again, I think we'll use a tree line road to frame the front of this and create kind of a nice little grid around it. So let's again upgrade those to sugar maples before we forget. And that creates quite a nice kind of central road leading up there. Now we want to get in all of the buildings we can at this level so that we can start to upgrade. Now importantly we have got dormitories so that's definitely the next thing that I want to look at bringing in. So we'll extend this road out this way a little bit um, and then we're going to bring this up and have car parking here for the dormitories before we head on into them. Now the good thing about the liberal arts dormitories is they don't have spaces already on them I don't think. Let's just check that. No they don't. So we can position them up against the path and it doesn't look strange. Whereas with something like the study hall here, it's got all the car parking spaces around it. So it looks really odd if you place it on a path. So let's just remove that dormitory just for a second. And we'll add in a little bit of car parking either side of this road. Just need to extend that on a tiny bit so we can get them nice and equal either side like that. Then I'm actually going to fleet out the road and realign it like so. And then we can grab our paths and we're going to destroy the power line for this, but I'm OK with that. And we're going to bring one out across the water's front like this. And that's going to be where our first dormitory sits out here. So it's nicely again positioned, looking out onto the water. Ignore the water pumps for now. They will be moved. That's a temporary solution for sure. And we're going to create kind of a nice little design out of this. So I don't want everything super duper uniform. But what we could do is come out of the back of the main building here and then do a 90 degree angle like that. And then we could fit in another dormitory this side. Now, I do want to be a little bit careful with the concrete on either side of it. We've got a bit of a gap there forming. So let's perhaps actually just shift this over a little bit so it's more in line with that path there. And then at least the concrete joins this side. That's a little bit more open over here. And again, we'll grab another path. I think we'll bring that out actually almost parallel to where we've got our car parks there. And then we can add in a, another dormitory like that here. So we've got like a kind of slightly more interesting formation. Um, I'm actually not loving this. So let's, let's redo that. And we'll bring out something more like that. And we can place that on the back there. Because then that does allow us to actually use a nice vanilla concrete path here to connect in the back of this building like that. And we could, of course, always try and go round the back of this one as well, just to create some extra connections here. So let's move this up just a little tiny bit and we should be able to squeeze in our path around the back here, which we now can. And then that will just help to connect up that bit of concrete at the back and help it make a little bit more sense than it currently does. We've got three dormitories in. There's a little dormitory complex over this side for the moment. Um, let's just have a little check of the campus level here. So the campus attractiveness is still not quite there. Students is going up, which is good news. We haven't got any academic works yet. I wouldn't expect that. I'm going to just whack it up to high speed for the moment so we can try and get there a little bit quicker. We do also have the drama club and the groundskeeping building. So I'm thinking with groundskeeping, what we could do here is bring out a road like this. I quite like some kind of playing fields up against this main road and particularly a university building over here. So we could utilize some of the sports venue, uh, local kind of community parks for this. And I'm wondering if actually an Aussie rules <laughs> football field might look quite nice here. We'll worry about the power in a second. That's a nice big open space to have around the campus. So I'm kind of enjoying that. Let's go back and grab our campus path here and we can actually connect that in. So that is good news there. So I can walk directly from the dormitories right out to the sports field. And that does mean we could potentially have our grounds keeping. Yes, we can actually place it on the path of the sports field. That's really 
That's really cool. <laughs> I like that. We could we could put it at the back. I think that's a bit more appropriate, so it's a little bit easier access to the campus. But yeah. Yeah, I think we'll put it there. And then it kind of almost looks like it could be a little clubhouse for the sports field out here too. So I have also just plopped in the drama club here because now that does mean if we click on the area, we have got the attractiveness needed to get up to the next level. We've also got the students, which is great news. And of course, we're just waiting for the academic works, which will happen. And we're actually still making money even despite the massive 20 grand grant. So yeah, pleased with that. But we do now need to think about public transit. Obviously, we've got this metro line that we have now added another stop in, in Walnut Hills. Again, please let me know your suggestions for that. I can't stay as Walnut Hills. So we want to bring it down and into the campus here. So we're going to have to do a little bit of uh, uh, layering, shall we say, with this to get it down and over this road. And I'm thinking I'd quite like it on ground level. I don't really want a raised metro running through the campus. And bringing it underneath the ground when we're already sloping down in the terrain is probably going to be unrealistic from this point. So let's grab this and let's start to slope it down as neatly as we possibly can. So of course, let's go to the smallest step elevation change. We'll go out to, let's turn off guidelines for a second. We'll go out to a point of 12 and we're just going to bring it down one notch. And then we'll do that again here. Now we do need to just drop down and have a little look at this as it comes across the road, which looks like we can do with a relatively straight incline, actually. <laughs> quite, quite pleased with that. Yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> and then we can bring it on into a station over here. Now, the one that I'm thinking is actually this ground metro station. I feel like it's probably the most appropriate for this area. The only other ground station that we have that isn't underground for metro is the Railroads of Japan one, which I'm not massively keen on the style of for this area, they are this one. So yeah, I think we'll just go for the Sunset Harbour one and we have hit Grand City, 20,000 population. Awesome, so we have got the baseball park if we're interested in putting that in. Of course, we could actually put in a bad peanut stadium as well. Really keen to hear your thoughts and suggestions on that. And we have now unlocked waste processing, which is awesome. We can definitely do a build with that. More industrial, my favourite. And we've got some various different transport hubs here to play with as well. Ooh, and the copper bowl. <laughs> oh, yes. We can have fun with those. So that is good news indeed. So we're well on our way, actually, to getting 32. I didn't think the population would boost that much this episode, but that is good news. Okay, so let's have a little look. So we need two and a little bit squares away from this line to have the metro coming straight into this station here. So we're going to have to kind of like judge it a little bit. I'm wondering if that's too far to bring it out. So if we bring out a connection from here and then try and line this up as best we can, I think that's not quite the right angle that we want. So we're going to have to bring this a little bit further. And then can we can we get this in nicely? I mean, that is just about two and a bit. Let's see where the station sits. It's slightly off. So yeah, let's just trim this back a little bit. I'll, ch <laughs> I'll check the length of the road for this. That's 280. So we want it slightly smaller than that. So let's go to 240. I think this one's going to be too far. So we may need to go somewhere in between. So let's turn off snapping to road length. Can we get somewhere between 240 and 280? So that snaps in at 240 there. We pull it a tiny bit further to there. Will this be the time that we've got it right? That doesn't look too bad. It's almost there. It's almost there. So let's actually just trim this back a tiny bit. We'll get our station nicely aligned on here. Yeah, so the concrete doesn't look too bad that end. And then we'll bring in our metro line. We might need to redo the slope. So <laughs> it's very slightly at an off angle. Yeah, okay. So I'm actually I'm actually quite pleased. <laughs> it's gone in okay. And then what I would like is the metro to run up alongside this road here. So let's turn all of our snapping back on. And we'll kind of snap into the guidelines of this road here and bring it out straight like so. And then we just want to create a nice bend to connect these up like that. And then the metro can run on the ground and then down through into our canal district. I'll probably try and integrate a stop into the stadium area that we have here. I think that would be needed. Let's go ahead and actually put in our line now. So we'll create a new line starting from here. Stop in Tyler Town Centre. 
and onto the unnamed district and then back again and then if we go and take a look at that let's choose a metro model i don't think we really need super high capacity for this i'm thinking one of the more modern ones would be nice let's go for the 240 modern one and we'll change the color let's go for a nice dark blue so we'll see how that line does but that should bring in a nicer load of people into the campus here now I'm thinking around this in terms of campus facilities, it would be really nice to have actually a child healthcare clinic. I'm thinking almost like a daycare is, is what I was really thinking here. And then of course it would be good to have a campus medical clinic as well. And because we've got all this noise pollution around here, I think this is probably an appropriate place to bring that in. So we could have a little more parking out in front of it and then bring this down across into this road if we can get that connection nicely in. Let's just delete out again that road. We'll line it up to where we want here. That's gone <laughs> a little bit crazy. Yeah, that'll do nicely. And let's go into our car parks again and we'll add in a little bit of parking. Probably don't want that orientation actually there. Just around the front here. And then we'll go ahead and grab our medical clinic and add that in there. Again, alongside a little bit more parking. I think here we can't get enough campus parking <laughs> ultimately. This is maybe a little overkill, so let's trim this back and we'll add in a couple of these ones. I might actually just get rid of those because <laughs> we can actually, thinking about it, it might be nice to add in the drama club down here too. So we could squeeze that in here if we just move this medical clinic up a little bit. Let's grab that, move it over one block and then we'll move in the drama club to sit up next to it. Got a nice kind of collection of smaller campus service buildings out this side around the metro station here and then let's finally just adjust this road as i always like to do and make sure that's coming up to the edge of the concrete line there and we could also add in a little campus shop i'm thinking something like small like i quite like the red brick marketplace corner asset in here i think maybe it's that orientation i can't quite remember we'll see what we can get in and then we'll adjust it as we go so it is now a case of waiting for the end of the academic year and see if we can upgrade this a little bit further before we add in too much more details. We want some other buildings in and around here. So let's go ahead and skip through time until we can get to level two. Okay, so we have reached level two and we have so many students coming in and the academics work massively paid off. In fact, you know, I'm, I did lower it. I'm going to keep it at 20. We got four in one year. <laughs> From that i've already given another grant here as well so we just need to get the attractiveness up to get up to the next level and this metro station is working like an absolute charm we've had 210 people service last week it's super duper busy there is a flood of people coming in and out every time the train comes in we can see that now here yeah there we go <laughs> So that's really great to see that that is working. And I realised we need a 4 by 4 for the marketplace. So we're going for something different here. In fact, I don't mind that building too much. I think we can keep that in there. So with level two, we have unlocked the uh, outdoor study area. Now, the obvious place I'd like to put for this is at the back of this main building here. And actually, luckily, we've somehow <laughs> managed to get it so that it fits in perfectly there so i think that's a really nice green space at the back of the main building behind these car parks kind of dividing off the residential areas between some of the more academic bigger buildings out here now the next one we've unlocked is the gymnasium i kind of feel like that would be appropriate to go next to the sports field over here but the front of it is really nice i think it warrants a kind of special entrance road to it so what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to use the tree line road again for this. We're going to create a kind of curve on this corner almost. Now it's unnecessary junctions granted for what it is. But if we place this in kind of in the middle of it, it's a little bit janky in terms of some of the surface, unfortunately. I'm not sure if we can actually put in an airport apron here. We can, but it may be a little far back for what we really want it. So we could put it in here, actually. Can we do the same on this road? We can, which actually aligns quite nicely to the concrete. We're left with this big concrete space in the middle, but that's all right. And it's sort of, apart from that bit of junk there, it's kind of fixed the edges. But yeah, I think if we position it there, it gives it a little bit more importance, having this sort of open plaza in front of it. Obviously, the road network is unnecessary. It's purely for design's sake. But I feel like, again, it gives us a different angle as well. I don't want everything kind of gridded and uniform across this campus. A liberal arts campus, I'd imagine, is kind of old. 
in the making. I imagine it's been here for many years before Tyler was fully built up to what it is now. So little slightly off-road networks I think are needed. So yeah, I, I like that placement there. And again, we'll change this to our sugar maples on that road there just to keep that nice and consistent. And we could do some statue detailing or, or something like that in the middle there. So we also have the cafeteria and the liberal arts fountain. So the cafeteria, firstly, is a kind of annoying building, honestly, because it has car parking spaces on it. So we kind of need to put it up against the road to make it make any sense at all, which is a little bit frustrating as I would have probably put it back somewhere by the residential areas or even at the back of this car park over here, which we could still do. There's no reason why we can't. But I like to pay attention to what's on the asset and the fact it has car parking spaces makes me go, we can't do that. So what I am thinking for this now is actually slotting it into this space here next to the main building. It kind of as well when you're driving in sort of hides the residential off a little bit, but is also still then close enough to them that it's an easy access. You'd want them to be close to the cafeteria, I think, for the main campus. And we could definitely have a couple of these in. That's not to say that we couldn't at all. So we could even have another one down here by the metro station. Um, I want to keep this nice and open in front of this building, but there is potential to have one down the side here. So if we create a nice kind of square area for this, and again, we'll keep this open with a nice bit of design detailing in the middle of it. Then we can go back, add another cafeteria perhaps to this top corner near the School of Education, which is kind of where people coming in for the day, maybe they're not necessarily residents, can stop off for their lunch over this side. And of course, the Liberal Arts Fountain. Now this... <laughs> This needs to take pride of place somewhere. It's a special asset. So what I'm thinking of doing is redesigning this entranceway. So let's trim that back. If we place this right in front of the entrance here, it makes a nice feature point uh, for coming into this campus area. We can grab our road again. Let's extend it a little bit further up. Let's turn angles on. And then what we can do is try to create some diagonal kind of interest roads here spelling out from the side of this main building because that way it will give us level crossings or zebra crossings even here where the path meets the road which again kind of i think helps to make it make a little bit more sense than it currently does so if we bring this straight by out by 240 like this either side then we can create curves to come up and meet this one so let's bring that out a little bit further um, and then let's turn on all snapping for this. And we could bring it round something like that. So let's just check the distance that we're going here. So that we can try and get this parallel. And nice and even. Yeah, I don't mind that. It would probably be beneficial to change these to one-way roads though. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll just do the grass verge for now because then we can add in our own trees around it. So we'll create a kind of split in the main road coming in. So you've got this big feature fountain right in the middle there. I think will sit in quite nicely. So we need to do a bit of detailing in and around the fountain to make it sit in a little better. But I think that creates a really nice kind of curvy entranceway into our campus area like that and let's not forget of course <laughs> to upgrade those back to our sugar maples there okay so we've actually got all of the things needed to get to level three i'm really keen to get there today so i think we will be through time and hopefully get there we may with that unlock another school of environmental studies which would be really great to bring in today too so we'll skip through time again and see if we can get to level three Okay, so we have now reached a level four and I did that by spamming down some of the additional buildings from level three once we'd reached that and then we have eventually reached it. I had to actually put the education boost policy on the entire city. <laughs> so I'm just going to take that off for now because it doesn't really matter if we're below the levels. It will downgrade, but we've got the buildings unlocked, so I'm not too concerned about it right now. And it should go up the levels as our population starts to increase as time goes on as well. So let's have a little look about the kind of final designs for our level four university. I think we'll save it for another time to get to five. We were struggling with the level of students fluctuating quite a lot. So we'll do that and we'll leave some space here for a level five expansion out this way for the final school and the couple of extra buildings that we get from that. But let's take a look. I did actually leave this in because I was looking at this and I really quite liked. So this is a commencement office building. 
I really quite like this little place now where I've just placed a path going straight into it and it's nicely connected and fully functional. We can press play now. <laughs> um, and I quite like this at the back of the football field in and amongst uh, all of the rocks at the back here too. I think that works pretty nicely actually. So I think we're going to leave that there. But what I would like is a nice big building up against this road here. Now we have unlocked quite a few actually with this. So we've got the library now. We've also got the auditorium and the laboratories and the laboratory is probably a big one. We've also got the bookstore as well, as well as a couple of additional fountains. This is a very big, very nice asset. <laughs> so I kind of think I would like to place this down the front here somewhere and kind of pride a place up against the road. I think it would be quite a big building to drive past as well. It's not going to fit next to our gymnasium like this, though, and I'm pretty keen on that orientation with the little extra plaza in front of it. So I'm wondering if perhaps we add in potentially the auditorium down here, if we could get this in. So we could place it in like that here. And actually there's no car parking spaces on this one, which is kind of handy. And then if we place a road going up the back of it like this, then can we place the laboratories in next to it is what I'm wondering here. So this is, yeah, like I said, a pretty big... <laughs> building we can have it relatively close to the road there it's got a little extra car park I think it'd be quite a nice thing to pass on the ring road there we do have car parking spaces up this side which i feel like it'd be nice to provide access to but i don't think we're going to fit a road in there i guess it is sort of connected to the road this side it's maybe not too much of a problem let's actually go ahead and upgrade this one to the one with wide pavement so we haven't got parking along this road specifically and then that'll sit in a bit nicer I think that's kind of quite a nice view from our little ring road road out here. It feels relatively built up in this corner. And then you come around, you've got big, nice, wide open space as you come on down into the main university office at the front here. Now, the other major thing we have unlocked as well is this School of Environmental Studies. Now, for this, again, I'm thinking this would be kind of pride of place up against the ring road. So somewhere like this, I think would be quite nice because again, we'll have all this open sort of green space in between those two sections of built up areas. And this is quite a big building, so I don't really want it up against the waterfront like our School of Education. I quite like the sort of older looking buildings up that way. But I think it sits in pretty nicely there. We do also have the bookstore and it's a massive shame. <laughs> That, that won't fit in next to our cafeteria so i'm thinking actually let's uh take this let's just move this back for a second we'll see if we can get this on this corner like that yeah because it's got these odd spaces on the side so having them up against a road would make a lot of sense here i'm guessing they're boxes of books <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know it doesn't make a huge amount of sense to me and we could actually at this point take this road away let's get our cafeteria and can we line it up to the side of it We've just got a row of those buildings like that. We could do that. Or we could try and make it a bit more interesting. That's just something's come to mind here. Let's continue on our sort of diagonal patterns with this and bring out a road like this. This will kind of follow along with the terrain patterns as well. Then we could add in the cafeteria on that corner. And that just sort of breaks up that rigid grid pattern that was sort of forming at this end a little bit bar the metro station. So kind of pleased with that placement there. And then finally, there is the library. Now, this is another sort of old looking building. I think this would be really nice next to the School of Education at the back of the, the um, study hall over the, by the car parks out here. The one trouble is it does have car parking spaces on it. So I'm breaking kind of my own rule <laughs> by adding it in here. And we do also need to do a little bit of land flattening to get this in nicely. So let's just smooth those out a little bit. But I think this is probably the right placement for it. So we're going to have to kind of look away <laughs> from the car parking spaces for now. Because um, I feel like that looks quite nice. And again, just adds to the sort of view that we get from the river down here. We can still see the main office behind the outdoor study area. We're getting those nice old buildings in around that area. And then it's sort of like modern additions tagged on to the edges of it. Like the station, for example, at a later date. So I quite like that sort of effect. We also have the art club as well. And I'm thinking actually it might be nice to place these up by some of the dormitories up here and kind of sit in the middle of them. Somewhere nice and close to where they're staying and where they're living out this side. 
And we have the academic statue as well. So just the first one. I think, yeah, there's three things we haven't unlocked, which is the dance club, academic statue two, and the media lab, which is probably the best asset in the whole game, actually. I absolutely love it. And of course, we've got the School of Economics as well. So they're the kind of additions we'll tag on to this end at a later date. But let's have a little look at the academic statue, because I kind of think maybe we could add two of these in right in the middle of this grid here like either side of this road something like that to frame this area and then we can do some nice path designs and tree designs probably actually just tree designs and leave that open green space in front of the school of education there so that does now give us all of our buildings in of course we could put in more dorms as well which i think when we do the extension we'll probably put in another dormitory area over this side and I'm actually quite keen to put in a little bit of high density residential around the station over here, hoping that the noise pollution won't be too bad from it to act as kind of additional student housing that's a little bit different to the dorms that we have there. But we're going to go ahead and detail this all up now and include potentially some of that high density residential. Lots of green detailing, frankly, for this. So we'll do some more nice pathway patterns to decorate up the area. Lots of trees around this opening mall coming up to the main ring road here. And yeah, make some really nice, open, recreational, communal spaces around the starting part of our campus.
Okay, so it was kind of yeah, a little less interesting <laughs> in the detail compared to normal. A lot of uh, fences and hedges and trees. But yeah, I really, really like how this mall is sitting now with the fence and the hedge all kind of combined together. And then we come down here onto the fence around the fountain. I wish I had actual water coming out of it. <laughs> I think it would look pretty cool like that. But I think that that works really, really nicely for the sort of central focal point entrance around our main building there. And we did add in a bit of woodland, keeping this grass open area around the main mall here. Um, yeah, kind of like how that looks. And then we've just done little bits of adding in little bits of trees and undergrowth and things like that around the place, like particularly over here, um, which helps make it feel a bit natural. Added the statue, of course, in front of the gymnasium over here. Finished off the car parks with a bit of a hedge boundary. Again, a few little places around the residential box out here. And then fenced off for security down by the waterfront where we've just added in a few different rocks here and kept lots of open green space around these dormitories. I thought that was important, so the students had somewhere to go and sit outside in the sun, on the grass, even though they've got the outdoor study area right here as well, but extra space, always welcome, I think. Um, and then coming on to this bit, we just did a very simple, very, very simple indeed, <laughs> path pattern with some hedges around the edge, but I feel like having this so open in front of the School of Education just looks really, really nice indeed. So I'm actually really pleased with how it looks, even though it's incredibly basic and easy to do. I have no idea <laughs> how that has cropped up, so let's get rid of that. And we'll get in a much more suitable corner shop for our students. Um, and then coming on down here, we've just got a selection of little houses. Some of the more colourful ones that I thought would be quite nice is kind of added dormitories for the students or imitating that sort of thing, at least outside of the School of Environmental Studies here. Um, and then not really much else going on. Obviously, this end of the campus is unfinished, so I haven't really gone to any great lengths of detail to do anything out this end. We're going to be adding to it as we get more population into the city and more students here. So we'll be keeping this little area free to do exactly that. But all in all, I think it's come together quite nicely indeed. Now, we did drop down to level three because we haven't got enough students. It's massively dipped. We got up to 2,000 to get to level four and it somehow dropped back down to that, which is fine. It is going to ebb and flow as people go through the education system across the city. So I'm not too worried about that. It will pick up with time. We've got plenty of academic works. We've got loads of campus attractiveness and I have now reduced that budget. So we're starting to rolling the money again even though actually having 20 grand on it didn't seem to affect our budget whatsoever now the big glaringly obvious thing we massively need a name for our campus and i'm going to leave it up to you guys to choose one so please let me know your suggestions and if there's a few good suggestions we'll put it to a vote on the community tab uh something suitable like we've had throughout the rest of feeling the county so far a little bit funny a play on words a pun if you like uh, it would probably be a good thing here we had a few of you back in Oridon, so that was already gone we can't have that again but do let me know your suggestions in the comments and i'm really keen to see those and of course if you haven't got the campus dlcs which is really what the central focal point of this whole build and episode has been about please do consider looking at my instant gaming link in the description below for massive discounts across all of the City Skylines DLCs and a whole host of other games, which also helps to support the channel. But for today, that is going to be it. So if you have enjoyed the episode, likes, comments and shares are really greatly appreciated. And don't forget to let me know your name suggestions in the comments below for both this and the Brooklyn's and Queen's area I'd add as well. But that's all from me for now. So thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you again next time. Bye bye.